Hey everyone, Martin here for cgboost.com and in this short video, part of the quick tip series, we are going to have a look at constructing something very handy for your environment shots, a starry night sky element. I mean, you could just download an image or shoot a night sky shot and that can work very well in day shots. But once you start searching for night sky elements, you will usually find out that they are grainy or blurry usually unusable for 3D purposes, which means, yes, we shall make our own starry sky from scratch, using just shader nodes and layer on top of it various elements from a soft glow to animated clouds and of course the moon. In the end you'll be able to put it into any of your night scenes to serve as a backdrop that you can easily adjust and animate. This video is by the way closely connected to my master 3D environments course in Blender where you will learn for example how to make deserts, mountains, highlands, oceans, 3D clouds, weather elements and more. For a few weeks still this course will be in early access stage with the discounted prices so yeah check it out if I picked your interest. Let's start this lesson by making a sphere to serve as our sky dome. Make it a rather larger one, like 1000 meters, which you can set here. Once you do, however, it's best to raise the view clipping in here to not have your viewport cut it off. Apply the scale, it's usually a good practice, especially when you plan on doing some texture mapping node work, which we are. And since I'm not planning to use this sphere as my environment, rather as a 2D background for my scene, I will in fact delete most of it and use just this half sphere. What you should do at this point, uh, for later use in your own scenes, is deactivating the shadows of this object. I mean, if you make a really large sphere like this, it will of course cast a shadow, obstructing parts of your terrain. So to avoid this, right off the bat, we need to go down here and uncheck the shadow in ray visibility. That is, if you're in cycles. If, like us, you will construct the sky for EV, and let's switch in fact, you will need to create a new material and down here change this shadow mode to none. With this done, name it Sky Dome, make its shading smooth by right clicking and choosing it here and also you can hit Ctrl 2 to add more subdivisions to it. Alright, and with that we are ready to map some starry sky onto this image. So first, let's start working on our material here. Open up the shader editor and start plugging stuff into this color socket. To start off, it's going to be this noise texture node. And we can also fly inside of our sphere to see it better. If you activate the node wrangler add-on, which I'm sure you know is among your built-in add-ons, you just need to activate it in preferences. And I don't even know why at this point, when clearly everybody is using it, it's still not active by default. Uh, but anyway, uh, with it active, you can just press Ctrl T with the noise selected and you get this coordinate mapping setup. And in here, just leave everything as is. To be honest, you didn't even need to add it in because Blender uses this generated coordinates by default. Anytime you don't plug anything into this vector socket. But I wanted you to know the Ctrl T shortcut. And you can also already jump into the render preview mode and you can see something is happening. It just doesn't look like stars. But we'll work on that right now. To achieve the starry sky backdrop, set it to about 1000 in scale. And detail of 6 or more and leave the rest as is. Now let's see, we have this typical color noise which we don't really want. Instead we want to make it stars. So first logical step would be to get rid of the colors. You can simply do that by adding the trusty companion to all shader editor adapts, the color ramp node. Now when you adjust the endpoints like this, well well well, right away we have some nice looking stars. They are dim, but when you plug them into the emission shader as well, they start emitting. That was easier than you thought, right? I settled at the values of 0.65 for the black point and 0.7 to 75 for the white point, depending on how bright you want your stars to be. Okay, let's select the nodes, hit Ctrl J to frame them and name the frame here in the sidebar menu, uh, stars. You can even change the color and the size here. 
So that's the starry field and next up comes the bottom edge light glow. The note you can use to create a gradient seeping from below onto your starry field is this gradient texture. Let's in fact unplug the starry field first to not see it and plug in this gradient texture by itself. First into the color and then into the emission. And here's a little trick. If you hold down shift and right mouse button drag, you create this reroute node. And now let's drive our connections from this point. The advantage of this is Next time we want to plug something into these two sockets, you don't have to plug it in twice, but instead you only plug it here. Saving time like a pro. Okay, back to the gradient texture. By default you can see its position from positive X to negative X, going from white color to black. I found the gradient to be kinda hard, so in fact, let's switch to this quadratic one first. Second, I want it to come from below, not from the side. So for that, let's hit that Ctrl T shortcut and this time we will use it. By the way, leaving the coordinate method to generate it has one advantage and that is if you later start scaling your sky dome, the texture will stay the same. So now for it to shine from below, we just need to rotate the Y axis negative 90 degrees and push it on X axis until we see some result. And you may need to hold down shift when manipulating with this X value because it gets very sensitive. Now would be a proper time to add a camera to our shot. So let's add one. Position it wherever you want it. Raise the end clipping of course to avoid far distance clipping of our sky dome and set up any resolution you want. I will use this cinematic 21 to 9 aspect ratio and a fairly wide lens. And now with the better idea of the final shot, you can play around with the mapping a bit more, even with the X value. A very fast way to control the color of this glow is to simply add a mix RGB node here and make it a color method with factor 1. Now we can just play with the color here, making it slightly bluish or any other color you want, really. Finally, we want to blend it with the starry field. So for that, you can in fact add one more mix RGB node and leave it to mix. Plug the stars to the first socket, the glow to the second socket, and here we go. And by the way, if at this point the glow is too soft at the edges for you, you can always add a curves node here to raise the intensity for the midpoint, low points or high points, or make it more contrasty. A really handy note this one. You can also rotate this on Y somewhat more to make it coming more from one side or the other. Frame this network and call it a glow bottom. This one can function as anything really, for example an atmosphere layer or a dim glow of the coming dawn. Next up we can start adding the moon. I found that by far the easiest solution is to just use an image texture and stick it onto your sky dome. So you can search for a CC0 transparent moon texture, download it and just import it with this image as planes add-on. Another one of those indispensable add-ons that should be active by default. So once you add it in, make it larger and stick it onto your sky with the snapping option activated. Hit center and align rotation and then just move the plane across the dome while holding control. Place it where you want the moon to be and in the shader editor plug it into the emission as well. To control the color of the moon you can again add the color mix node uh, with a similar color as we used for the glow, only you don't have to make it as intense in the factor here. If you want the emission to be controlled by this color mix too, just plug this output into it. Also you can adjust the emission if you plug in a curves node in between the mix node and the emission socket. It's in fact better if you raise the dark point and bring down the highlights so that the emission more evenly spreads across the moon. Cool. And you know what will make it even more cool? Activating the bloom option in EV render settings. I ended up with this settings of 0.6 in the threshold, larger intensity and bluish color. Now to ensure the moon sticks to the surface of our sky dome, you can first parent it to the object. And then you can also add this shrink wrap modifier with default settings. 
make the target our sky dome and you can also add a bit of offset so that the moon never intersects through the sky dome. Very nice, but the moon is missing a bit more glow to it, so that's what we'll do next. The moon glow we could create in many ways, for example by sticking in a spherical gradient image behind the moon image plane. But I wanted it to be part of my sky dome material, so instead I duplicated the bottom glow network and reused it to make a moon glow. So first off, let's plug it in by itself and change the gradient type to be spherical. Then it will be just a matter of scaling down the glow and positioning it here so that it's where the moon is. Before we do that, however, we can change this mapping type to texture. Without going too deep into how the texture type differs from point type, what's important now is that if you want to make your texture smaller, in point type you would have to go up with the scale, while in texture type you can input numbers smaller than one. Which, at least to me, always makes more sense, especially if I want to experiment with placement. So after a bit of playing around with the scaling and positioning, I arrived at these numbers. This is of course not the most user-friendly solution. Uh, the glow is traveling over our sphere uh, kinda unreliably, but you can do that. And mind you, the numbers here will of course depend on the position of your sky dome, of the camera and also where you want the moon to be in the shot. And if you find a better solution for this, definitely let me know in the comments. Next up, there's the color node. I left it at about 0.5, I did not want it to be too colorful. And finally, I plugged it in with a very low factor and mix blending type. However, this glow wasn't good enough for me. I wanted to have a larger outside glow and smaller inside glow. For that, fortunately, there is an easy solution. You just use this glow texture twice. Before we do that, however, let's frame this new network. And then duplicate this color node and also duplicate the mix node and plug it behind the first one. Finally, plug the new color node into this new mix node. Okay, that just blended in the very same glow as the previous one, uh, only making it more intense. However, a node that will allow us to play around with the shape of the second glow is again this curves node. By making a contrast curve like this, I was able to bring down the less intense parts of the glow and bring up the highlights, making a smaller, more intense shape in the center of it. Then just edit the factors up here, blending them until you like the result. And you can also play around with the color of the two glows here, of course. Very good, this is getting us somewhere. Final layer of detail we'll add are going to be these clouds. For that, we'll use a noise texture, a 3D type, so again, plug this in here for now by itself. Scale of 4 and we can make it quite detailed at a level of 12. Also add a bit of distortion. Next, bring in a color ramp to be able to make it black and white. And increase the contrast like this by bringing the two points together. 0.45 for black point and 0.55 for white point looks about right. To plug it into our network, bring in a mix node and plug our last mix output into the first socket. And for now, let's leave the second one empty, making the cloud white for a while. Because now we're making only the shape of the clouds, so we will plug this noise texture into the factor. That essentially mixes in the white color to the spots defined by this cloud network. Now we can see the cloud shape clearly. But of course, we don't want it to be this white. Before we solve the color though, let's figure out the mapping. With Ctrl T, add the mapping network to the texture, but this time we'll choose this object method to drive our mapping. However, we will not use the sky dome itself, but rather let's add a new empty and choose it down here in the object picker. It's now very, very small, but if we scale it to the scale of our sky, which was 1000, the clouds became the right size. And you can even change the type of the empty to be sphere. Having a helper object like this is a great method to have direct control over the positioning, rotation and scale of your textures, especially textures you want to animate, like these clouds. If now you want to make them move, you can simply keyframe the empty, rotate it or move it, whatever looks best for you. Now there is a small downside to this, because when you scale your sky dome, the clouds will not scale with it. 
For that, there is a simple solution. Just parent the empty to the sky dome. See? All good now. Okay, it's time to adjust the color of our clouds. I mean, I don't want to make anything elaborate here. Basically just make the clouds darker with a brighter spot around here where the glow of the moon is. And since we already have this glow position figured out, you can just duplicate this network and push it here. To see it better, let's again plug it in by itself. You can change the type here to be this quadratic sphere, because that one gives you a smoother glow gradient, rather than the sharper sphere type. Then just play around with the mapping node again, until you find the proper position for the glow to be around this point where the moon is. You can also plug in our favorite color ramp node, but this time we can use it to color the thing. By adding a dark blue to the darkest points and soft blue to the brightest points, you can color it in a much more believable fashion. Like this, for example. Now, we want to use it in this cloud structure, so instead of the plain white color, plug in this color ramp into the second socket, and voila, we have achieved much better looking clouds. And now, you have this good looking sky dome that you can easily scale, rotate and pan around with your camera, appending it to your night scenes. Of course, this whole shading network could be made much more elaborate, adding more structure to the clouds and overlaying even more elements. However, I wanted this tip to be short and easy. So that's where I'll leave it. If you watched the previous video I've made focusing on weather effects, you can of course add in for example a falling snow simulation. And with a bit of work and building a few other elements, create a simple yet good looking real time scene in Eevee. And of course, if you want to make some more advanced environments, you can join my Master 3D Environments in Blender course. There, I'll guide you through all the important steps. And with that, I thank you for watching and see you next time in some of my other videos here at CG Boost or at my personal YouTube channel. Links are in the description. Stay creative, my friends. Martin out.